chromium diome side, Spanish Jesus, and my main man over here are all here. And we're ready to, oh, look at who just walked in. Come on in. Hey, did you bring enough coffees Come for everybody? Come on down. Nope. <laughs> okay. Sorry to leave. Now that we're here. Five seconds from leaving. Okay, ga ga goo. You know, on, on a personal note, I'm thrilled and proud of the guys that are here. Everybody pulled together and done a great job meeting what I consider to be a, a difficult, not impossible, but a very, very difficult deadline. So we are ready to test our fuel pressure. Okay, got I'm a bet man. Oh, wow. I'm gonna hold it on there. Oh, well, hang on. What's it supposed to be, 55? 58 and a half. Ready? Now try it again. Oh, wow, it's at 56. That's crazy. Again? 56, what's wrong with that? No, nope, not wrong with that at all. Look at that. And I think we are ready to fire. Ready to fire. Fire up firepower, right, Chromium? That's right. Oh, <laughs> now we're getting goes. somewhere. Yep. And is our ignition, yeah. I guess, whatever it's... The ignition, everything's hooked up, so it's sure good. Woo! Yeah! Plasm, plasm, plazoo! That's what I'm talking about. Plasm, plasm, plazoo! Awesome. Well, oh, that sounds good. That oh, my, my. Oh, hell yeah. Woo! Tonight on Graveyard Cars. We'll start doing stupid faces through the glass, and then I can start painting. Will gets to work on the highly anticipated Charger General Lee. Meanwhile, Dave goes on a search for buried treasure. This piece right here is very expensive, you know, and I can actually restore that and, and reuse that on the next console. With a firepower CUDA only days from the unveiling. Got nine days till that car is up on display in front of 420 trillion people. Can the ghouls complete this car while living up to Mark's expectations? Seem to line up okay or? Oh, crap. Will gets to check an item off his bucket list. Yeah, I just painted the General Lee, so that's pretty bad. And Mark makes everyone uncomfortable. Got to turn your panty dropper lights on. Whose panties do you want to come off? Uh, nobody in this room, sir. All this and more coming up on Graveyard Cars. A lot of this isn't just about me. From Graveyard Cars, Mark Warman. Yeah! I ain't never going to die. They're coming, they're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been established that the buried dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman, and together we bring dead muscle cars back to life. To exactly the way they were on the day they were born. In case you've been monkeying around with gas. It's leaking all over the ground. <laughs> Extra <laughs> sandy <laughs> Here's what you missed. Mark first unveiled Operation Firepower to the ghouls as his own unremarkable 71318 CUDA. When a mystery client requested Mark for a super secretive project, the ghouls were shocked to learn that not only did they need to drop everything they're working on to restore this car, but that it needed to be showroom ready in only four months, making it one of the fastest builds in Graveyard Cars history. Returning from the Dipper, the ghouls banded together and finished the CUDA's bodywork in record time. Mark revealed the true purpose of Operation Firepower to build a 1971 CUDA featuring a brand new plug and play 392 Hemi crate engine. 60 days. When I say there is no tomorrow, there, no, is there ain't no, no tomorrow at all. We got to That's the first it, time it. that actually makes sense. And the build will be revealed at SEMA in Las Vegas. With the CUDA painted and the engine installed, it's now in the final stages of assembly. But will they deliver it in time? That's cool. I love it. If we get our dash hooked up, we can shut it off and operate off the key. Run it out. That's cool, man. God, How that cool sounds is that? Amazing. Isn't that awesome? That's cool. I mean, I'm expecting it to 
die and do Can't the game. Can't make it any more simpler than that. It's, it, it's gonna run and this computer's gonna control everything. How freaking cool is that? You believe that? I know, that's amazing, Dad. You're the only one. Well, you, Dave, Will, Mike, and Royal. Handful of guys in the world! Oh, oh. That is beyond crazy. It's kind of weird seeing the old hot rod sound quiet. I mean, it doesn't sound anything particular. It sounds no different than my Chrysler 300. That's it. Look at that. Wow. Smell like awesome That's or what? That's the finishing touch. Because that right there is about as cool as classy as any car can get. That's it. The ultimate muscle car right there. The ultimate Cuda. muscle car. The best of both worlds. Yep. With SEMA looming on the horizon, Mark hops over to the body shop to check in on the General Lee's jump into paint. All right, Willie and I are out here right now going over the 1969 Dodge Charger. General Lee. General Lee. <laughs> Keller. Corvette Red. What's his proper name? Flame Red. Yeah, it's start. Corvette Flame Red. Okay. Yeah. In the movie. It was also a big bad orange in some of the TV shows. That's what shows you thought too. it was. But... Yeah. Well, that's what it was in the show. Well, not this car. Well, you know what? I wasn't there. I, I'm not J.R. Burton. I didn't, I didn't build a car. There's no tomorrow. Yeah, you know I, everything. I'm saving a car. Okay. Well, Ryan saved Second the car. primer is done on this vehicle. Final primer. Well, not according to my eyes, but that's okay. If he can, if he can pull it off, he can pull it off. I'd be more than happy to, to sign of off on it. You're going to run a tape line down the side. What he's got to do is got to preserve the integrity. Sorry for the bigger words. Of Which this one? style line all the way down the side, both in its vanishing points as well as its uh, solid points that don't vanish out, like the like the horizon so I'll just line. Run the tape line. I use uh, words like lock horizon. The upper, get it looking good. Vanishing. Once the tops clean, that line's nice and crisp. Integrity. I'll mask off the top, then do the lower. I use these words Unmask it, to describe then I have a really, life spit defending once it's, something. Once it's, that's where I've tried to avoid just even getting him at this point and just doing the cars, but I know this was kind of an important car, so you have to get him out here. I said, I don't want to around. Let's just kind of do way. this car like we Otherwise, did. Otherwise, I suggest you pick up a paint kinda, gun and stand the post. Kind of do this car Either like way, we did the SEMA car. I don't give a what you think you are entitled to. Now ask me if I ordered the Code Red. So we're kind of going to treat the Code Red. We're going to kind of treat the Code Red. Ask me if I ordered the Code Red. Like I'm going to kid. You got right I did! Now that Mark is generally pleased with Will's work, he can get back to prepping the firepower CUDA for SEMA. Uh, everybody's been doing a great job. Uh, Dave's been hard at it. I've been actually out in the shop a little bit helping. Alyssa's had her hands on it. Royal's been involved. Mike's been involved. But it's going really, really well. In fact, we're, we're almost at the point where we're out of the woods on it. I got an emblem, a Plymouth emblem to put on the hood. I got a very cool set of fender tags that go underneath the hood that I had custom made just for this car. All right, don't mess up, Dad. Okay. You can only do this once. Nobody's going to yep. mess up. I'm going to split the difference yep. side to side. And it should be straight regardless of the leading edge of the hood. See how the hood has a slant to it? You don't want that slant. That's not right. That's crazy talk. So I'm going to drop that side there. All right. That's awesome. That's and a nice little touch. So with that, if somebody wants to open the hood, Dave, yep. I'm going to get the custom-made one-off fender tags. If this car were real, they never made a 392 Cuda in 71 have been a 426 Hemi. But the options, the bolt-on options besides the drivetrain, for the most part, are what you see here. So everything, while it does match the car the way it's optioned, the car is not a real anything. Started life as a 318, three-speed manual transmission. I've been storing it for 20 years, dragging it around, because it was a good body. The dash actually grew legs, uh, meaning somebody pulled the dash out of it at some point, not realizing the VIN, the one that you can't have made new, is gone with the dash. So we didn't have, we never had an actual VIN to the car. So. That's why I put the bogus numbers down here, 100001. And then once we're done with it, we'll have the DMV inspect it and they'll assign a VIN number to it. And we'll just put that in the door pillar. Back in the booth, Will is ready to lay down the first coat of paint on the 69 Charger General Lee. I have the doors, fenders, and deck lid in here for the General Lee. We just got our paint in, so we're uh, ready to do the pre-paint on it. But before I do that, Mark's gonna come out here and do the same routine that he does every single time we start painting a car for the first time. He's gonna come out here, he's gonna inspect the parts, he's gonna make some stupid joke, funny noises, 
uh, talk about a movie, maybe a song. When I say they're not ready, he'll go up with his, maybe the magnifying glass and he'll touch something and say, well, you should probably do something about that when these parts are perfect and they're ready to be painted. Um, and then he'll walk out of the booth, go to these windows, and then at that point, he'll start doing stupid faces through the glass. And then I can start painting. And then he might even come back and forth a few times while I'm painting. So it's pretty much the same routine that goes on with every car that we paint. Let's open this up. We just got our dash in from Instrument Specialties. Yeah. This is a rush job. Uh, so grateful to them for helping us get this done. We, we built the whole car in less than 90 days for the love of heavens. You know what I'm saying? There's an I and B pie. Away. That's a better looking dash than that one in the Challenger. Yeah, no. All yeah, right. Sitting up look like that, that so everybody can see it, how pretty that looks. Look at that. Boy, isn't that nice? Got your variable speed. Got your variable speed wiper control up here. Yeah. Got your panel dimmer. Got your headlight switch. Got your heater controls over here. 150 mile an hour spin hour. Reset to zero. 8,000 RPM tack. Correct up through 72. 73, they dropped to a 7,000 RPM tack. Got your clock over here. AM radio that's converted over to AM FM MP3. Nice. So. Look at that badge. But this is that, that. <laughs> oh, that yeah. Tag is nice, Look at isn't that. It? It's even got the little ribs in it and everything, huh? Wow. That's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Ready. Make some history. Ready. All right, let's do it. All right. I'll let's... do the walkthrough. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, yeah. good. There we go. It's a young man's job. Yep, tools and everything are in there, so it should be good. Okay. I'll let you pull me so I'm not pushing you. Okay. Get myself here. Most of the connections Dave is going to make once it's in the car, which is different than we normally do but it was important in this particular case to do it this way because of the uh, wiring that the 392 has to offer us. All right, speedometer cable is in. Yep. And, and now up. we lift up, rotate it up. That's what's great about a Mopar dash. They rotate up into place. That one's, I am lined up on mine over here. Yeah, I'm on the end here. I'll get you a screw there. Okay. Can you get that one? Yep, see, I made eye contact. Never make eye contact. Yeah. around, dude. What did I tell you guys? Go to these windows, and then at that point, he'll start doing stupid faces through the glass. <laughs> Willie got a Matic hat on. And a Matic hat again. All right, getting back to some painting. Get some painting duds. How long you had that hat on, man? Ain't long enough, why are you doing this again? He's gonna come out here, he's gonna inspect the parts, he's gonna make some stupid joke. These are the parts with the uh, General Lee. Yeah. And uh, what color do they go? Red. Just red? Okay, Mark, right. re Mark Red. Mark Red. Yep. Mark Red, Corvette Red? Yep. All right, I thought it was Flaming George Red. <laughs> why you... Yeah, I don't, yeah. it is. Flaming. I think everything's starting to look kinda Good. Put the hat on, put the hat on, man. Uh, talk about a movie, maybe a song. Hello, baby. Oh, do I what? Mm -mm -mm. Do I what? Oh, this is a new one I've been doing. Never again. Never again. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna paint this. I'm just gonna. And then he'll walk out of the booth. and then I can start painting. Gonna get the paint mixed up uh, and then start, start spraying these parts. And then this will be the last time uh, that we do a bit with Mark in it for any paint work. <laughs> uh, this is the first time I've ever sprayed this color. Uh, any, anytime you do a new color is nice, so I'm excited to paint it and it's gonna look great. We've done the greens, a lot of the high impact colors in the past. So it is exciting to get orange in here because that's something that's new to us.
Hey, it looks good. Uh, I'll just kind of go through and make sure uh, none of my wires are pinched before I tighten all the bolts down. They mainly get pinched in behind these little frames right here where you bolt it to the side and right around the steering column area here where it mounts. And I was kind of concerned about our, our electric gas pedal because our gas pedal on this car here is electric, doesn't have a throttle cable. And I was worried that the radios are so big and these original cars, they stick out like that far. I was worried it was gonna hit the top of that gas pedal, but I got like two inches of clearance, so everything looks perfect. So all I gotta do basically is, got my bulkhead right here, and I just gotta hook my factory style OE clips into that bulkhead. Uh, one of them we're not gonna use because we, we don't have a neutral safety switch. Uh, set up on this engine. It's a little bit different, so we won't use uh, the one port here. And so everything else will hook to that. Then I'll screw that into the firewall. Uh, steering column goes in and should just fire right off on the key because I got everything pre-wired on the other side. So see how it works. Uh, right now, the guys are over from i5 Glass. They're getting ready to install the windshield in our 71 Challenger RT and our SEMA car, our our Operation Firepower, 71 Cuda with a 392 Hemi and a six-speed Tremec. I say that I have three jobs here. I'm a friend first, a boss second, probably an entertainer third. So, Sir David Brent, Office, BBC, episode one. Glass is getting ready to be set now. I have to be on my best behavior. Tensions are high. These guys are stressed out of their minds right now. They're really pressured out. There goes Master Dave right there. Gonna walk over and give a little assist. Gonna lower the hood, the bonnet, if you were in England. You've got a little battery operated device there is installing a, a bead of urethane around there. Looks like it's about a half inch tall, maybe five eighths inch of a tall. Can anybody find me? Somebody to Love. They just finished setting the glass in there. It's beautiful, it fits right. It's got the same height that we want to be able to use our reveal moldings. They'll come down flush. Sometimes if you don't have enough urethane in there and that glass sets in too far, then when you put your reveal molding on, you'll have a gap between the reveal molding and the glass. So this is the perfect height. Should be about a quarter of an inch lower than these actual molding clips right here. That's gonna give us a perfect finish. So as soon as that sets up, Dave can go ahead and put on the windshield reveal moldings, the lower reveal moldings, the windshield wipers. Then it's time to fire it up. All right. So we got our seats all ready to go in. We got your setup over there. Okay. I am very excited. I'm glad that I get to help out that Dave has let me help out with the firepower car. Oh, heck yeah. Okay, they're a little heavier than I look. <laughs> Hopefully they all drop right in there. The hope. How you doing? Seem to line up okay or? I know mine's tweaked over here. Is I it? usually need your dad's uh, fat butt to sit in here. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, I got two on. See ya? Two started. Look at that, huh? Crap! Well, you know, I'm a nice enough guy. I'm gonna let you come sit in here. No, it's okay, Dave. You won fair and square. <laughs> Will you push down my seat for me so yeah, I can start this Yeah, which side one? you need? Towards you? Uh, yeah, through. It's just Yeah, fun. let me kneel up here. Not that I'm gonna sit on your Oh, there, there we go. There we go. <laughs> gotta put some more, more weight. I don't weigh a whole bunch. Hold on, I think I... Okay, I got it. Okay. I'm Kay. trying to shove myself up against the roof. Now, you got it? Yep. Okay, cool. Woo! Ooh. Ah, that was cool. It's ready. Okay. Come jump in the driver's seat. Really? Yeah. Wow. This is so cool. Isn't that a sweet car? Yeah. And it looks, I mean, it looks old school from the yeah. inside. Oh, doesn't Absolutely. it? You wouldn't know that it yeah. has a brand new motor in it. Yeah, that it's a all brand new, oh, new yeah, technology. Oh, yeah, look at the dash. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Ooh. All right, ready? No, yep. Yeah, it'll actually, <laughs> I got the battery disconnected, but it would go. <laughs> wow, it seems like you sit up pretty high. Larry, you put a little extra stuff oh, in, in really these babies, comfy. which is good though. Yeah, they're really comfy. Yeah, it almost, almost dragged my head on the roof, but this is cool. This is awesome, I can't believe it. This is, and we did it in 90 days. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, good Sorry. job. 
so yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Let's go to SEMA. We're going to drive there. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, we're going to take the car to SEMA. All right. Yeah. Well, it looks good, Dave. Looks good really job. cool. Good job. Thanks for your help. Yeah, no problem. It's awesome. Thanks for letting me be a part of it. Man, if I was going to steal any car, I should have saved mine for this. If I would have yeah. known, I wouldn't have stole well, the challenge. I was... Well, hopefully everybody I can't can. steal two cars, though. I everybody can drive this one. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. Huh? All right, let's All right. do it. Let's go talk to your dad. Maybe he'll let us drive it. Yeah, right. Right now, I have just finished doing the doors, the two fenders, and the deck lid for the General Lee. They came out absolutely perfect. And while they're uh, curing, I'll get on the body of the General Lee and start getting that ready for paint. As Will finishes the paint, Dave goes back to the graveyard, hunting for more charger parts in preparation for the General Lee's assembly. I'm in one of these 69 Dodge Chargers, or I'm sorry, this one's actually a 68 Dodge Charger. Uh, being that I got the General Lee coming into the assembly room soon, I had to order a ton of parts for that car. I'm kind of going through these here to kind of, you know, get as many usable parts that I can, that I can restore. And I mean, that's the purpose of these cars is to save what we can off of these cars and put them to use and, you know, put these original parts into another car. You can see I got the grill out of this thing. You can see here, it's this whole top section here is pretty trashed. As you can see, this is a 68, because it's a flat grill, 69. It's got that nose piece on it, like you could see in that one. But what I was concerned with mainly on this here is you can get a lot of the grill assemblies and stuff aftermarket. OER's got an awesome reproduction of a 69 grill, uh, but it doesn't come with these old vacuum pod, you know, the lift motors. So I'm thinking I'm gonna convert it over to, uh, to electric you know, which would be great. I'm sure the owner would like the electric way better than the vacuum anyway, but a lot of this stuff is usable. So I'm just kind of taking usable parts off the car. Uh, we can use these here in our 69, uh, you know, Daytona, or if we need it, or other 68 and nine chargers. So this is definitely stuff that's worth saving and testing and see if it's any good. Uh, this, this car over here, the 69, has a pretty good, you know, center console set up on it. So I'll be able to get the shifter all it had in there was the top plate, and I can restore that and get that looking nice. Got me a list right here of what I made, you know, that I need to get. Whatever I can't find out here, I'm gonna call Tony. He'll hook us up with what we need, and I'll have everything ready to go before that car gets in the assembly room. All these pieces right here, even though this console was just garbage, this piece right here is very expensive, you know? And I can actually restore that and, and reuse that on the next console. Same with this little piece here. You can see that nice 70s uh, shag going on in there, but uh, it's supposed to be wood grain underneath of there. So we'll be able to restore that and get that fixed up. And then I need this piece right here, because whenever you buy an aftermarket center console, it doesn't come with these pieces. So I need that. And then even on this piece right here, these are really important. These pieces right here, this, this chrome piece on the sides of the console, those are they're expensive to buy, you know, restored. So I'll be able to restore those and reuse them in the car. All these little clips, I mean, everything means a lot. And so that's why I try to save as much of this stuff as I possibly can. I got like one bolt just barely in there and then I can get the steering column out of this and uh, see what else I can grab out of here. My little buddies. Yeah, see my little friends here? Keeping an eye on them. My three little buddies. I'm definitely dumpster diving today because these things are a mess. I like to stay clean in the assembly room, but sometimes you gotta get outside and get dirty. Haul this sucker out of here. Oof. Uh, right now, Will and I are out in the paint booth. Uh, he got me because the General Lee is primer. It had its final primer, is that yep. correct? And is in the booth ready for its initial or pre-paint. Uh, as you recall, this was the one that did the freeway jump. Had the front end torn up on it, had the back end secondary damage throughout it. So we ended up putting a used donor front clip on the car. A clean so one. A very, very nice, clean. original paint one. So when it came back from the dipper, it looked like brand new metal. It was beautiful. So what a great donor for this car. The back half we built out of our auto metal direct uh, sheet metal and frame rails. So it's got new frame rails, quarters, trunk floor, trunk floor extensions, inner and outer wheelhouses, Dutchman panel, reinforcements for the back window area, lower gutters, all that stuff's been replaced. Once it was done out here in the shop, we sent it over to Josh who works in our mud room, called the mud room. It's gotten one primer, came over to you, got blocked out with 180. Yep. yep. Then it got a second primer. This is where we're at now. It's finished off in? 220. 220 grit, which if this was the final paint, 
we would probably finish it off in 400. But since it's a prepaint and we're doing a single stage Deltron, PPG Deltron over it, that 220 is gonna be a bite. That paint's gonna go in there and bite it. You couldn't get it off if you wanted to. So that's what brings us, huh? You could get it off. You couldn't get it off if you wanted to. I thought we weren't gonna fight. Oh, that's right, sorry, go ahead. Will and I had a little chat earlier about some of the shenanigans, if you will, that have happened out here. Um, he brings out those things in me, and I'm right now trying to be a very tempered, calm person. I bring it out in uh, you. notice I haven't asked for your hat or anything like that. So we're here to work on cars, not play games, not play house. Beautiful, I love it. All right. He comes out from one extreme to another. Now he's Mr. Professional, which will last. Do you have your magnifying glass or your glasses? Sean need them. Great. Beautiful. We are business around here. No more chicanery. Our Facebook page blows up every time I try to be funny. I'm told by the masses that I am A, not funny. One guy referred to me as an whatever that is. I've never seen an or a hat except the old Burrow commercials, that Colombian dude. Focus. But I don't even know if he, Focus. okay, sorry. Focus. I'm not an hat, I'm an inspector. So we're gonna look at this car right now. Like I said, it's just being one extreme to another. So right now, just because I asked him to, hey, take a quick look, quick look at this so I can paint it early in the morning. Let's not around. Let's not screw around. Um, he takes that, oh, we've got to be serious now. And then people write in on Facebook. They get tired of that. Let's just, hey, let's cut the Let's cut the crap and get to work. Thank you, sir. So. Oh, thank you for the sign off. And uh, beautiful. He signed off on it. I've already got most of the parts done. So I can shoot the body. As soon as the body's done, I'm gonna pull it out, I'll shoot the hood, and then I just got a little jam work to do and this car's completely pre-painted. And I can move on to the next one. It's a good start. Oh, we should have high-fived. Dang it. I loved watching Dukes of a Hazard. I watched it a ton. It was one of my favorite shows. Had the little lunchbox with matching thermos, but then I kind of went more towards the Fall Guy because I thought it was cooler to have a jacked up Chevy truck that really wasn't all, actually all that jacked up, but he did cool jumps in it. So I kind of watched both of those a lot growing up as a kid. We got lucky with this car because it has come a long ways and it is cool that we have another big name car here to do. I mean, I just painted the General Lee, so that's pretty bad. Do you feel confident that all the wiring is where it should be? I know you played around with the remote starter and stuff, so is everything to you, in your mind, ready to fire? Yeah, yeah. You feel I confident? Wire I feel too. confident, yeah. You did help wire. What'd you do? Well, Remember when you wanted that blue wire? Oh yeah. And I hand it to you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you so go. you're part of the wiring. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and you got him a drink of water, so you're right. part uh, of the- Me and Mike helped with it a lot. With Ooh. the wiring? With the oil sending. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. trying to get some gauges the oil going. Sending yeah. So where we're at right now is we've got a 1971 Barracuda that's a tribute to a Cuda. All right, here we go. Well, that's why I was waiting for him <laughs> to say that. Good, yeah. Got to turn your panty dropper lights on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Whose panties do you want to come off? Uh, nobody in this room, sir. And that's a 392 cubic inch bad boy. Listen to that. Isn't that awesome? How's that sound, Willie? Sounds very nice. Ha, yeah. <laughs> amazing. What that a beautiful, beautiful car. Beautiful. Look at that. It is a beautiful car. That is That's beautiful. The grill looks awesome, That's Will. Nice. It does. The whole car looks great. Yeah, it's beautiful. Good job it's wiring. Good. good job yeah. wiring. Uh, good good job, job handing him that blue wire, Will. What about the paint? Couldn't have done it without you, Tiger. What about the part that I did? <laughs> the paint looks beautiful. What's the paint what code awesome for this one? Car, huh? F J. Just open up that door Five, for me. Six. Six. Sure. Six. six. <laughs> gonna go ahead and be the FJ6. Oh, what the? She can get in there. Don't put it in gear. Yeah. Okay, Rupert. It's a brand new motor. Keeping it all original like this, it, it's oh, just, yeah. it's a bad car. Yeah, yeah, you wanted to customize it. You wanted to slam it in the weeds and put yep. 22s yep. on it and yep. all yeah. kinds of weird stuff. And I said, no, this is what people are having when their are garages. We, it? we are tomorrow. I will take Alyssa with me. We'll go on a road test. You can drive it and take Will with you. What I don't do you get think? to drive this? You're not gonna drive that car. I'm driving this. You're not driving I'm this. I'm driving it. I'll get Mike, he'll let me. No, he won't let hey, you. Will. No, I have the keys, man. It's I'm, my not, car. I'm driving it. 
Okay, well, you're out of a job. Okay. So. All right. <laughs> Speaking of out of a job, there is a uh, dirt nib up here in the top. No, I'm out of a job. Right. Okay. Speaking of keys. Uh, yes. Don't you got a, oh, yes. a special key for this? They don't put automatic starters in <laughs> manual transmission cars. Because if you happen to leave it in gear and you hit the key, the button, and it starts and you're not in it, you're in trouble. Oh, right? gosh. It's going for But ride. I did think of this the other day. What a great way to kill yourself, <laughs> right? What? Just lay down right in front of it, make your note out, pin it to your chest, and... Isn't that cool? It That's runs awesome. over you. Yeah, runs right over Looks you. Looks like an accident, so mama still gets the insurance, right? You just gotta get somebody to come get these out of your cold, dead hand. <laughs> I'll do it. You do it yeah. and drive the car? Right. How about that for magic? All right, this is it, maiden voyage, what do you think? It's awesome, thanks for letting yeah. me drive with you. Sounds good, doesn't it? It does. It sounds smooth. It feels exactly like my Challenger, actually, where, you know, the, the fuel injection isn't quite like a carburetor, so it has that, that little stall right there mm -hmm. where a carburetor might not have it. It's kind of an interesting feel, I guess, but wow, look at that. Royal's got the steering wheel straight. Nice job, Rolo. Chromium diome side. Bald <laughs> what? Nice shift. Boy, that's short. Look at that shift. First, second. Wow. Yeah. I'm just amazed at how smooth it is. It actually feels like my Challenger. Yeah, it doesn't feel like we're driving in a 71. Factory brakes feel good. Nice. Quick little third gear right off the bat, and that's sweeter than the popcorn fart. Well, no, I'm not driving it. No, 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 you're not. Do you, would you like to do more cars like this? I'd like to have a whole other facet of the business where we build these, yeah. Because, I mean, in retrospect, they're not actually as hard to build as the older stuff, right? Because they're not looking for a bunch they're of They're easier to build than yeah. the old, older ones, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Because all you really need is the body, and you can buy the dashes, or you can in production now. You can everything, buy, lots of... you can buy everything out of a magazine now to put it together. That's cool. With a 392 Hemi Cuda's road test complete, it's time to load it up for its historic reveal in Las Vegas. The transport truck for Mopar just showed up. Uh, they're getting ready to load the car inside. We've got it out here. Uh, Mike and uh, Dave and I, who've got a ton of hours in that car, are uh, kind of a little bit like expectant fathers, right? Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. It's always it's a little baby. nervous. and So we've already had a little chat with him about death and how that can happen if they were to have anything happen to the car, that kind of thing. You're gonna take care of that, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Mike's my hit man, you know, he'll take care of it, so. It takes about 14 and a half hours to drive there, so we're taking off on Sunday. We'll be there on Monday for the dry run on the Mopar reveal, and then Tuesday at 426, Hemi, they're gonna have the big reveal. For the one-off, first time only ever, 71 Cuda to have a 392 Hemi ran by a factory Mopar accessory controller. A lot of guys out there would have liked to put that in there, but they only called one. Woo! <laughs> The car came out beautiful, a little bit of a transparent color, so it took four coats of single sage to get it good and covered. But the car looks amazing and uh, went pretty smooth. I'll let that sit for about a week and fully dry. I'm gonna jump over, I got all the parts over there. I need to get them jammed, start doing some of the jam work here and there. And then we'll block it down and start doing final paint. And then it goes over to Dave where the car will get assembled and the decals will get applied, which I will have zero to do with other than telling Mark, great job, so that way I don't get suckered into having to do them by myself. Uh, 
Uh, so right now, Willie and I are out front of the big SEMA building. That's the main convention center. Uh, we have gigs all over the place that we're signing for. I think I have They're a couple more than him. Just they some... call them gigs when you're in this business. When you're in the entertainment I am in the business, business. it's a gig. But yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're getting to see a lot of uh, really cool people. Some people I met last year, a lot of new people we met. Yeah, yeah, rock on! It's like a rock star. They weren't even talking to you. They were it's like being a rock star. They were high-fiving each other. They were looking this way. They weren't even looking this way. They were looking way. this way, trust me. A lot of this isn't just about me. So, right, no you know, shit. <laughs> None of this is about you. Got lots of fans. There's about three to four thousand people right there. There's three. We just went through this last time. There's, There's hundreds three. of them coming down the aisle way right now. There's a couple hundred yeah. coming There's in three. here. Uh, there were still around twenty thousand people waiting for autographs, but uh, there was nobody. <laughs> there was a lot of. There was a lot of. Yeah. A lot of. Well, look at it. I mean, there's a lot of people. And this is twelve inches. Yeah, I know. Oh, is it? <laughs> you no, Mark. I'm gonna take the high road. You go low. I go high. I was shocked by the turnout. I can't believe yeah. how many people come to see my dad. We've had people from all over the world, Denmark, Brazil. It's been really great to see the fans come that far. It's really great to be around all of these car people. They're all car people. You know how many people told him that they liked his dancing? And that he's never gonna stop. It's never gonna end. Nope. And it's so funny to me too when like women come up and they're like, oh, I love you. You're my I will watch every episode. I'm like, why? Like, do you see him? Or? It's great to see so many people there that share the same passion that we do, the same hobby, you know, be it OE, aftermarket, just cars, you know, it's a great American pastime. About a quarter million people out front watching, getting ready to go up on stage live. Oh, there he is. Oh, yeah. And of course, from Graveyard Cars, Mark Warman. That's it? Really? Do, do it one more time. One time. Now, pay attention. And from Graveyard Cars, Mark Warman. <laughs> All right. CJ, what's up? Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Have Good to see, see you, buddy. What's going on, man? This is the, the first time, I think, that anybody could say that a car's built completely by Mopar, but it's not necessarily exactly the way they were when they left the factory. Meaning, we've got a 71 Cuda, looks exactly like a 71 Cuda would be in the FJ6 sassy grass green with a D21 four speed. But when you open the hood, it has a 392 Hemi in it, a Tremec six speed transmission. We got the regular Dana 60 in the back. Now we saw when the hood came up, the, the shaker on there. Did you have to make any modifications to make that shaker fit? Well. There's been people that have put the 392 in some of these cars in the past, and they, none of them had the shakers because they said it wasn't possible, but we took the extra steps. What we've got is a 71 shaker hood, a 71 shaker bubble, but it's grafted onto a 2016 shaker base plate. Cool. So it's so totally functional, totally serviceable. We have two wing nuts on the bottom that we can lift it off and work on the top of the engine if we need to, but it's all 100% pure blood Mopar from bumper to bumper. That's awesome. Thank you. Continue to hang out here at the Blasting Last Stage. We've got a lot more coming up. Thanks, guys. Take it all in, fellas. Take it all in. The pictures of this guy right here. I ain't never going to die. Make sure you use the hashtag Velocity. Tonight, we watched as Will was able to move the General Lee further along in paint, while Dave prepped for its arrival in the assembly room, and the ghouls raced to get the Firepower Cuda to the finish line. Dave and Alyssa finished out the interior, including seats and dash while Mark provided backing vocals for the windshield install. Somebody to love. Then, Mark and Alyssa took the 392 Hemi Cuda for its first ever test drive. And finally, the ghouls made it out to SEMA for the first time as a team, marking a very special moment in the history of graveyard cars. But two questions still remain. Can Alyssa finally get back at Will 
for all of his pranks. You're making us so nervous. Like, come on. <laughs> oh, I swear to God. And will Mark be able to unveil the car without embarrassing the team? Chris Jacobs and I just finished doing, what do they call it, a, a commercial uh, wrap? Or a, yeah, ma yeah, marketing wrap, yeah. Marketing wrap, industry term. Um, Chris Jacobs, if you don't know it, is a die-hard, bleeds blue Mopar <laughs> guy from the roots of his toes all the way to the top of his head. Definitely. He's got a really cool GTX that we're in the process of doing a little thinking, a little spitballing on. Might be able to come up with a pretty clever idea here real soon. Got plans for something. We're getting ready to fast and furious the out of these cars. Sideways. Right? I can't wait. Oh my gosh, this is my idea. Fun. This is actually a pretty good intersection, man. A lot busier than I thought it was. Hi. Hey, guys. Hey, what are you doing, dude? Oh, my God. Dude, what? Dude, wait, Look at that. Turn around. What? You brought that No, I bought it online. You can get them online. We're like know? your biggest it's, fan. It's limited edition. Oh. Sign us something, please. You're Look making us so that. nervous. Like, come on. <laughs> oh, I swear to God. I've been dying to get Will back for a while now, and I thought I'd take it one step further and try to convince somebody to wear it up at the to our booth where we're doing a signing and act like his biggest fan. Give us a hug, come on. You're, we're your biggest fan. He's so afraid of us. Why? No, because I hate that shirt, dude. I hate that shirt. Well, thank you guys very thank much. Thank you. You thank guys you really so did much. make his day. He just does yeah. not show it. I don't get embarrassed <laughs> easy. That did it, dude. Yay. That did it. <laughs> so Alyssa has stepped up her, her game. Uh, that's probably, hands down, the best joke anyone's ever done on me. You got one coming. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Here, she's got I'm one a coming. little nervous. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the head of Mopar Worldwide, Pietro Gorlier. Oh, the reveal was awesome. Uh, seeing Ron there, we were both uh, shooting some video and watching Mark up on stage with those awesome, you know, 345 Hemi, 392 Hemi. Uh, it doesn't get any better now. I was really proud of my dad. I, th I think that he did really good. I mean, I couldn't get up there in front of all those people. And knowing my dad, who does not do well out of his comfort zone, I mean, I thought he yeah. did really good. Yeah, he did really good. Mobile no or no car. car. Thank you. God, the car you came know. out great. Yeah, everybody loves it. Great. I can't, you know, stop talking yeah. to people about it. I mean, everybody's hitting us up about it. And, asking about your suspension and everything else. So it's yeah. a win-win. We're here in the best part of the SEMA show, and that's the Mopar. We feel that we got a winner here, and I give it my full blessing. I think it's an amazing, an amazing next chapter to it's Mopar. Easy. Yeah, it's, it's easy. easy. Less money, there's just no reason not to. There's a thousand reasons to do it, and there's not one not to do it. SEMA 2016 graveyard card, just the beginning. This is the beginning, right? It was awesome. Stay tuned, more to come.